Hi. This video is about your Smash Cards KDR and how you can improve it. At the moment, mine is 2.36 as you can see in my stats. To get an idea of a normal KDR, I went to the unofficial Smash Cards database. I took the KDR of all 359 players, and plotted them in this graph. Most people are around 1.4. My KDR falls in the orange bar, so I am not with the best, but still top 10%. This video will give tips on how you can improve this number. Enjoy! The first tip is very basic. If you aim directly at a moving target, you will miss your shot. What you want to do instead, is aim where you expect your opponent to go. In that case, you can actually hit someone. While this is easy to understand, it is actually quite difficult to learn. To get an idea of when you should fire, you can practice with bots first. While an opponent not always goes where you expect him to go, like in this example, this technique will greatly improve your kill number. The more kills, the better your KDR will become. For tip number 2, we look at driving styles. A lot of players press forward, use left and right to drive around, but never use their reverse. In this example you see the opponent firing a nuke, which you can never evade by driving forward. Using your reverse is really important to avoid attacks of others. It can also be useful to bring yourself in a better attacking position. You've got a reverse, so use it. Tip number 3. Do not wait until you are sure to hit a target. Instead, hide bombs. Shoot blind sometimes, and you will get some lucky free kills. But never do this without a new weapon very close by. You don't want to be defenseless. So far, we talked about getting more kills. However, if your KDR is bigger than 1, deaths are actually way more important. During games, you see a lot of players charging at each other with the same weapon meaning certain death for both players. Let's look at an example of why this is so bad. I am close to the end of a game. I am equipped with a machine gun, and start driving toward the middle. Then I see a player coming at me with rockets. Instead of taking the fight, I avoid him, and then the game ends. End result, a KDR of 14. If I would've taken the fight and died, my KDR would only be 7. Even if I would've rockets as well, and got a 1 for 1 out of the situation, my KDR would be lowered to 7.5. This is an extreme example, but the rule always counts. Therefore, avoid 1 for 1s as much as possible, and don't be afraid to flee from a fight sometimes. It will pay back in the long run. It is very important to use your weapons in their strength. On a flat surface, straight shooters like rockets, nukes, and bullets, are very strong. Lobbers, like cannonballs, will lose equal fights, as your opponent will drive underneath them, before they do damage. When driving through low tunnels, the cannonballs are even weaker. On the other hand, on a terrain with height difference, the lobbers get the advantage, and straight shooters lose their effectiveness. Therefore, move where your weapon can be used best. In this example, I drive in two identical situations. In the first case, I pick up bullets. Since they are strong on a flat surface, I turn around, and can use the weapon to kill an opponent. In the second case, I pick up cannonballs. Therefore I drive up, and can use their advantage on uneven surface to get an extra kill as well. Although this is mean in real life, you should try to target the weak in the game. The best weapons for this, are the machine gun, and the nuke. The machine gun automatically fires at people close by. 
the newt creates a big blast upon impact, and very weak players that are within the blast radius, will lose all remaining health. Therefore, as long as you shoot somewhere close to a weak player, you will automatically get the kill. You can also use the blast radius of other weapons, but they are either smaller, or they don't immediately explode upon impact. In this example I combine four of the tips mentioned so far. First, I use tip 5, so I drive up because I have cannonballs. Then I see a player spawn here. Using tip 1, I expect him to drive straight. Even though I can't see that, I take the gamble, like I advise in tip 3. The gamble was right, and I did hit the player, but he has little health remaining. I am lucky to get a machine gun, and I chase him down, getting an extra free kill on the way. You should not only change your gameplay based on your own weapon, but also on that of your opponent. For example, if you have spikes, driving straight at someone with rockets is not the best idea, but if the person has a machine gun, it is a great opportunity to smash them. Most weapons are fired forward, leaving players vulnerable at the back. Here I smash a player that has cannonballs with a machine gun. Cannonballs can do way more damage in a short time, but he simply can't defend, since I got on his tail. The last tip says you should look at your enemy's weapon, but not all weapons are visible. If you see players without a weapon, they can have spikes, stars, mines, and a fake loot box. Therefore you should be careful with driving straight at, or close behind players without a weapon on their cart. Unnecessary risky driving will lead to more deaths. Therefore, try to keep your distance, and you will surely decrease the amount of times you get smashed. Besides looking at the enemy's health, your own weapon, and the enemy's weapon, also keep an eye on your own health. If you are low on health, flee from fights more often, and try to sneak in a kill or two using high damage weapons, like the nuke. Finally we arrived at the most important tip of the list. Being competitive, and setting goals for yourself can be nice, but don't forget to just enjoy the game. It is better to be bad at the game while you are having fun, than grinding for hours at a high level. Did any of these tips help you? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Keep smashing.